Welcome. Today we are working on University of Waterloo's Canadian Computing Competition C uh, Junior 4 from the year 2020. So this question is called cyclic shifts. And basically what they describe a cyclic shift is, is that you have a string such as A, B, C, D. And if you take the first letter and move it to the end, that becomes one shift of that letter. So A, B, C, D becomes B, C, D, A. And then you take that B and move it to the end. And so then it becomes C, D, E, A, B, and so on and so forth. And the question is asking, is it, it does, it's going to give you two strings. So the first string here, and then the second string uh, is going to say, basically it's going to check does the first string contain any cyclic shifts from the second string, right? So in this case, for instance, there is um, CDBA is a cyclic shift of ABCDE. A, and so, and that is located in there. So this would return a yes, otherwise it returns a no. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this is, the first thing you have to look at is there are there is a method um, both in C++ and in Java where you can check if one string is contained within another string. So in C++, uh, let's take a look. This is the language that I'm using right now. Um, but in Java, it's uh, I believe string dot contains. In Java, it's string dot find, or in C++, it's string dot find. So we're going to take a look and we're going to say string string one is equal to um, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay, or something like that. Well, let's let's actually use the example that they gave us. So, so A, B, C, C, D, E, A, B, A, A. All right, so something like that. String, string two is equal to A, B, C, D, E. All right. And what we want to know is, do they actually, is is this string, we're going to look, is this string in this string? That's all we're going to do right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this. We're going to say if st string one, okay, so string one is going to look using find for string two. All right. Now, normally it would return the position, right? So um, I'll show you here. So if I have this, I take away this. So there's a A, B, C, D, E. And we will just actually comment this or copy this here. All right, so I've put that in there. So it's A, B, C, D, E, and it returns zero, zero here, showing that it's in position zero. If I put a W there, Right, we get the same thing, but now it returns a one because the A, B, C, D, E is in position one. It starts in position one. All right, but what if it's not in there? All right, so I took out a C before, so let's put that back in. Well, all of a sudden we get this like ridiculous number here. All right, so that's basically a, a, what's called the no find um, or no position. So it's a special uh, return value that's given if a string cannot find it. Okay, so we're going to say if the string does not equal to string no position. Okay, so meaning we did not get the no position, which means we did get a position. Then, then we actually found um, we found the string we are looking for, and we can see out yes. Otherwise. We're going to see out no. Okay, so here we have, this should give a no. All right, so there's a no. And if I put an A, B, C, D, E, all right, there's a yes. Okay, so now that we can find one string within another string, uh, what we can do is we can actually work on uh, doing the cyclic, the cyclic shift. All right, and the cyclic shift, okay, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do some string manipulation. All right, so what we'll do is we will have to say string, new string, is equal to, now 
we're going to have to, you have to know a whole bunch of these uh, string um, string methods that are built into strings in order to do this. Okay, so new string, string new string is equal to, okay, so we got to take everything from the old one. So we're going to say string2 dot substring, substring, and we're going to go from one to string2 dot length or size I believe and size will tell us actually the whole size so we have to say size minus one All right and what we'll do is we'll just test this out and say C out new string okay so it doesn't actually matter in this case it should say no but then the new string should actually be um, now it should be B C D E all right, so no, and then B, C, D, E. Okay, so what we want to do then is because we have the substring in there, what we can do is we can say the new string is equal to new string plus string two at zero. So we're going to add in the new position. All right, and now let's see what happens here. All right, I'm just going to put out an end line here. That's going to get erased, so I'll just leave that in the bad formatting there. And there we go. So B, C, D, E, A. There you can see we've, there we go, B, C, D, E, A. And there you can see we have uh, done the cyclic shift. All right. So we have our new string um, like this. Okay, but what we can do is, I believe, we could actually just do it all at once. So instead of doing it in two pieces, we should be able to just do it all at once here. Um, let's test it out, see if it works. All right. So there's our new string, B, C, D, E, A. Okay, so what we do is we look, we run this test to see if it's contained inside the um, the first, the second string is contained in the first string. Then if it if it's not, okay, then what we do is, well, actually in this case, it doesn't matter if it is or not. What we're going to do is then we're going to go and uh, do the uh, the cyclic shift and then check again. So this implies that we're gonna need to put this into a loop. So what we're going to do is we are going to put this into a loop, right? And we need to loop so that each letter of the string can actually have its turn to go first. So what we'll do is we'll say for int x is equal to zero, x is less than string two dot size, um, x plus plus. Okay, now this is actually going to create a little bit of a, ha a hiccup for us. It's not a huge thing, but what will happen here is that if we say, like we only ever wanted to say yes or no, and what will happen is that when we check it the first time, if we find it, you can say yes, and then we could actually put a break there, and that would actually stop this, but um, and that would work fine. But in the case of the no, what it's looking for is it's going to say no, but then it's only going to, it's going to say no every time for each, each um, cycle. We don't really want that. So what we're going to do is instead, we're going to create a Boolean called found and found is equal to false. And then what we'll do is we'll just say, if it's found, then the found, actually, before we delete that, we will say the found is equal to true. Then once we finish looping, checking everything, what we can do is we can say if found is equal to true, then output yes and otherwise output no. It's just otherwise what will happen is that we'll just get this, um, we'll get found uh, the, output, the output happening too many times. All right. Now, if we find if we find it and it becomes true, there's actually no way for this to become false. So then what we can do is just break. 
right? Because it never becomes false. If it's there, it's there, right? So hmm, let's take a look, string size. We, if we found it, found is true, and we break. And then if it's not, then if we don't end up breaking, then we'll just go and, sw and swap out to the next uh, cycle. All right, let's take a look. Oh, uh, this thing needs parentheses. There we go. All right, so we got the answer here was no. So what we're going to do is we are going to put this into a loop, right? And we need to loop so that each letter of the string can actually have its turn to go first. So what we'll do is we'll say for int x is equal to zero, x is less than string two dot size um, x plus plus. Okay, now this is actually going to create a little bit of a, ha a hiccup for us. It's not a huge thing, but what will happen here is that if we say, like we only ever wanted to say yes or no, and what will happen is that when we check it the first time, if we find it, you can say yes, and then we could actually put a break there, and that would actually stop this, but um, and that would work fine. But in the case of the no, what it's looking for is it's going to say no, but then it's only going to it's going to say no every time for each each um, cycle. We don't really want that. So what we're going to do is instead we're going to create a boolean called found, and found is equal to false. And then what we'll do is we'll just say if it's found, then the found, actually before we delete that, we will say the found is equal to true. Then once we finish looping, checking everything, what we can do is we can say if found is equal to true, then output yes, and otherwise output no. It's just otherwise what will happen is that we'll just get this, um, we get found uh, the, output, the output happening too many times. All right, now if we find if we find it and it becomes true, there's actually no way for this to become false. So then what we can do is just break, right? Because it never becomes false. If it's there, it's there, right? So hmm, let's take a look, string size. We, if we found it, found is true and we break. And then if it's not, then if we don't end up breaking, then we'll just go and, sw and swap out to the next uh, cycle. All right, let's take a look. Oh, uh, this thing needs parentheses. There we go. Okay, so we can see that it said no, but our test code output here, uh, where we're outputting the new string, um, shows that the new string is not cycling. And the reason why is because we actually never set string two to be equal to the new string. All right, so we need to say string two is equal to the new string. All right, and that should reset string two. So the next time around, it will actually recycle, reset it, so it'll cycle again. And here we have now it's saying it is. All right, so uh, I guess I could have actually just said C out st string two. So just for our testing purposes, we can run this again, and you can see it went to it uh, tried it on A B C D, A B C D E, and then it went to B C D E A, and then on C D E A B it found it, and so it's actually here C D E A B, right? That's the string that it found, and so then it said yes, right? So I think overall that this is actually working. Uh, let's put in a Q here and see if we ever get a no. Right, so here we check for B, C, D, E, A, C, D, E, A, B, D, E, A, B, C, E, A, B, C, D. And actually on the last one, it cycles back to A, B, C, D, E, but it doesn't actually test it. It tested it actually before it said that. So I believe that it's actually working. It looks pretty good. I can't think of any ways that this would really mess up. 
So I'm going to take out the test code there and you can actually just delete it and get ready to submit to the grader and see what happens. Oh, and before we can actually do that, we actually have to have string one and string two be inputs, not just uh, set constants with uh, which we're using for testing here. So we're gonna go here and say C in string one, C in string two. All right, so what the the strings that we had previously were just ones that we were using for testing. Uh, these ones are obviously just ones where uh, these are the ones that we're actually going to use and take in from the grader. So let's go over to the grader now and see what happens. So I have everything loaded up in the grader here and it's uh, being submitted. So let's go to refresh. So far so good. Correct. First nine tests. Correct. 14 tests. Correct. 19 tests, oh, okay, it's looking good. All correct so far. Hopefully we don't have any ones that are just not. Okay, I can't see any situation where this would not work. So 29 and all 30 correct. All right, so as you can see, when we go to uh, knowing, like using these string manipulation uh, methods, it's actually really, they're really handy. Um, and it makes something that normally would be a really tough problem into something that's not really that bad.